Hello there, here's the second part of my extremely belated 2020 skincare favourites. No, you're not imagining it, it is June. And I've only just had a chance to film this because it was going to be such a monster video. In the end, the product list physically didn't fit in the description box, so it ended up being two videos. In the first part, you can find all of my favourite skincare steps and the products I used in my morning and evening routines last year, pretty much a complete skincare routine video, so I'll link that below. In this second part, we're talking about the relaxing bath and body bit luscious lip balms, smoothing hair products and pampering hand and nail treats that played a huge part in my 2020 self-care routine. I didn't want to squish this second half of my favourites list into the first video because this is probably the more significant part for me. I certainly found a lot of comfort in the ritual of my morning and evening skincare routines and I know so many of you did too but it was really the little moments of calm and comfort through using a lovely hand cream or the scent memories of a body product or the warm warmth of a bath oil that had a bigger impact on my mental health and just helped me get through the year. I hope I can capture some of those calm, peaceful vibes in this video. Sit back and relax, run yourself a nice bath, or give yourself a mini hand massage while you watch. First, we're stepping into the bath. Truly my favourite way to switch off, run through my skincare while I soak, and catch up on YouTube. My obsession with Olvirum's bath oil only deepened in 2020. This scent is just heaven to me. It was a 2019 favourite too and I can't see it going anywhere. This is an intense mix of eucalyptus, lavender, verbena, lemon, lime, geranium and rosemary. Very green and relaxing. It's so concentrated you only need to use a third of a capful and it will still smell like you've turned your bathroom into a spa in the middle of a forest. It's not a greasy bath oil and your skin feels nice and soft afterwards, but if you're more of a bath salt person, Olvirum have you covered there too. They launched these bath salts last year in the same intoxicating scent as their bath oil, so I like sprinkling these in instead sometimes. For something a little more subtle, I enjoyed Bamford's Geranium Bath Oil too. They make a few different types, but the geranium, lavender and peppermint combination is lovely. If anything, the lavender scent might be slightly out in front. Definitely transports me to where I'd rather be getting a massage. Finally, the fur bath drops were another 2020 launch for bath lovers. These remind me of dissolving all kinds of little colourful bath bead shapes as a kid. These are simple seaweed encased beads containing fur's signature fur oil, which has a light citrus scent and other nourishing oils so my skin feels soft and supple after a soak. Onto body wash and scents that took me on a mini mental holiday. One quick body exfoliator I loved was Necessaire's body exfoliator in Eucalyptus. This is a mixture of chemical and physical exfoliants, so the little black dots are not microbeads, they're tiny bits of charcoal that melt away. I prefer body exfoliators that foam up rather than being thick or pasty, and this one is perfect. In fact, it foams up so well that a little bit goes a long way, and using it once or twice a week, it's lasted for over a year. You know how much I enjoy Necessaire's body wash too. I love everything this LA body care brand makes and have every scent on the go in my shower. Last year they launched Bergamot and it was such an uplifting addition. Stepping into the shower with a bottle of this is like taking a trip to the Mediterranean with bergamot oranges all around. The scent is like a blend of orange, lemon and a hint of spice or ginger too. Another refreshing body wash was Natives Cucumber and Mint. Cucumber and Mint is my favourite native deodorant scent, that's what they're famous for, but this is great too. I finished the whole thing. Let me know if you'd be interested in an empties video at some stage, I've got quite a big pile waiting to be recycled. This has a sort of runny gel texture that lathers up nicely and I love the sweet, freshly cut cucumber scent. Ren's Atlantic Kelp and Magnesium Body Wash was something I reached for when I wanted to pretend I was by the sea. Can you tell I usually have a few different body washes on the go so I can mix it up depending on my mood? This smells quite salty and refreshing and the bottle is made from 100% recycled plastic bottles, 20% of which were reclaimed from the ocean and waterways. The last body wash that took me on a virtual vacation was Ren's Moroccan Rose Otto. I'm a big fan of rose scents, but this one isn't sugary or sweet or syrupy. It's a lot more earthy, like a rosy tea or dried rose petals, rather than a garden rose in bloom. That type of earthier rose scent really reminds me of a trip to Morocco, as the product name would suggest, come to think of it. 
next body creams, lotions and potions. The first two will come as absolutely no surprise to anyone who spent about two minutes on my channel. Necessaire's body serum and body lotion, such a spectacular combination. The serum is just like the sort of hydrating serum we use on our face. It's thinner so it sinks in straight away and it's packed with hyaluronic acid. Then the lotion is still the best body lotion I've ever tried. Creamy but not heavy, doesn't leave you with a sticky or tacky feeling. What it does leave you with is crazy soft skin. Nothing else I've tried has an instant and lasting softening feel like this. Both of those are fragrance free so when I wanted to turn into a walking rose garden by Terry's Bomb de Rose body cream was beautiful. I'm a fan of everything in the Bomb de Rose family but this one is such a treat it feels really luxe and rich but isn't too heavy if you stick to a small amount. Not for the faint-hearted because the rose scent certainly isn't faint it's a heavier sweeter rose style. If you've seen the Dev Patel episode of Modern Love, you might know Kate McLeod without realising it. Apart from being part of a famous love story in the New York Times, she's also the creator of the Body Stone, a solid body moisturiser made from cocoa butter and natural oils that melt on contact with your skin. I'd heard about these for years and bought one from Onda Beauty in the depths of lockdown because it felt like a real ritual and something so peaceful and calming. You stroke it on a couple of times, rub it in and you're left with nourished skin and an earthy rose frankincense and narrowly scent. Not a particularly exciting category but I had two favourite deodorant formulas last year. Just like the body wash, the native cucumber and mint deodorant is here. I started using their formulas early last year and got to work with the brand a few times but this video is not sponsored, they were genuinely a favourite. Natural ingredients like coconut oil and shea butter make them feel nice and smooth but you don't need much, two to three swipes tops. The sweetness of this scent is like water with fresh cucumber and mint. I also finished Necessaire's Eucalyptus Deodorant. This doesn't smell exactly like their Eucalyptus body products because the ingredients change the scent a bit, but what I find with this is that it's less about the scent and more about removing scent from you. It really neutralises odour, so it's what I use when I want to smell like nothing, and I use Native when I want to enjoy a sweeter, fresh scent. There were a couple of lovely lip gloss slash balms in my 2020 makeup favourites video, but here are the other balms that stood out last year. The Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm only launched last year but quickly became a bestseller. The scent is like delicious vanilla cupcake icing and the texture melts in without feeling sticky or heavy. It has quite a glossy finish so I like adding a touch on top of lipstick or liner. One common complaint is that the tube can crack or split but it hasn't happened to mine, I try to be really gentle with it. The Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Kiss Cupuaçu Lip Butter was another delicious new addition last year. This coconutty and tropical scent transports you straight to a tropical island and the stick balm is easier to swipe on. The texture is nice and soft even though sticks can often be a more firm format. Strangely, Fenty's Pro Kisser Luscious Lip Balm reminds me of folklore because it was the balm on my desk when Taylor's album dropped last July and I was continuously swiping this on and hitting repeat. This is a nice blend between a balm and a gloss. It's light and creamy with a soft vanilla scent. I love Lano Lips fun fruity flavours but peach was my favourite last year. I remember trying it for the first time years ago, maybe even a decade ago when it came free with a magazine in Australia. This isn't a tinted peach balm but there's a great sweet peach scent and their usual nourishing feel. Kopari Lip Glossy could have been in my makeup favourites because it's more of a comfy gloss than a balm. It has a really sleek, smooth feel, not sticky, and a nice coconut flavour. Not as nourishing as the others here, but it's nice when you want a bit of hydration with your lip shine and it layers nicely over lip liner. This one goes without saying at this point, but by Terry, Bomb de Rose is a forever favourite nourishing balm and one of my top two balm pots of all time alongside Blistex for a bit of high-low shopping. Hyaluronic acid microspheres, vitamin E, shea butter and rose blossom essential wax all contribute to the beautifully buttery rich texture. It's still so surreal to have been working with by Terry on a long-term partnership since midway through last year but this is not sponsored just seriously good. We all had to take our hair into our own hands last year. Luckily mine's very low maintenance but there were a few products that gave me a salon feeling at home. 
The Dyson Supersonic Hairdryer is my holy grail hair tool and has been since about 2017. Now I'm never going to tell you whether a product is worth it because that's such a personal call, particularly when the price tag is very high, but this is the best hairdryer I've personally ever used and I notice such a difference if I go somewhere without it. My hair dries so much faster, looks smoother, it's so quiet, easy to change the magnetic attachments for styling, and I love the sleek compact design. I found a fantastic blow dry bar in Melbourne last year called The Blow. It was one of the best blow dries I've ever had anywhere, so I bought everything they used. The R & Co Oblivion Clarifying Shampoo is great for a really good clean and fresh feeling. Big fan of the scent. It's hard to describe, but it's almost salty meets citrusy. Then the R & Co Dallas Biotin Thickening Conditioner was what the stylus used to give my hair a bit more bounce and body after a blow dry. Loved every last squeeze of this. Need to repurchase. I also really enjoyed Aveda's botanical repair range that launched last year. This strengthening shampoo is completely empty, it was all about a gentle clean with plant-based ingredients and it repairs and strengthens your hair. But what I enjoyed most from this range was the Aveda Botanical Repair Intensive Strengthening Mask Light. I actually hadn't used any hair masks until last year but I'm completely hooked on this. It's like a fantastic smoothing nourishing conditioner substitute with more oomph. My hair is so much more shiny and soft using this. I also got into Briogeo, the female founded black owned brand from New York that launched in Australia at Mecca last year. I bought some minis of their farewell frizz range to try out and went back for the full size. The smoothing conditioner does exactly what the name suggests, but the Briogeo farewell frizz blow dry perfection and heat protectant cream was definitely my favorite hair find of the whole year. This makes a big difference to my at-home blow dries, helps tame any frizz or baby hairs and gives you a far more smooth, sleek finish. All that hand washing meant I used hand cream more than ever last year. 2021 me is devastated that one of my 2020 favourites, Rodan Crema, is no more. Estee Lauder closed Rodan in April, so I went on a mad backup buying spree and found some of these tubes online in Tennessee, I think. It's such a beautiful ointment texture that melts, and the Jasmine and Narrowly scent is honestly one of my favourite product scents of all time. Why do they always do this to us? A local Aussie gem I stumbled across was the Yard Skincare Hand Cream in Jasmine and Rose. This jasmine scent is just divine and so realistic. If you've ever walked past a big wall of jasmine growing, you'll know what I mean. Loved the creamy texture, but it sinks in nicely. All gone now. A French favourite for the past couple of years has been By Terry's Bomb de Rose Hand Cream. It has that delightful rose scent again, similar to the body cream I showed earlier. It's creamy, but almost a bit whipped, so it doesn't feel too thick or heavy. Le Paradis make terrific travel inspired products and I cannot tell you how much this Tahiti body balm helped me relax in the earliest panic stricken days of the pandemic. The scent is just stunning. Manoi oil from the tiare flower, the traditional flower of Tahiti, also known as the Tahitian gardenia, gives it this intense tropical gardenia scent. It's a body balm that melts into an oil, so I like using a tiny bit on my hands or adding a dash of it to another hand cream, like one of these two fragrance-free options. Necessaire launched their hand cream last year and you can see I was a fan. This is like their body lotion's little sister. It has a light texture, really fast absorbing so you can get on with your day, and my hands feel so, so soft. The finish is lovely, a really nourishing but light feel. Finishing with the lightest of them all, Olive & June's Hand Serum. This fragrance-free tube launched in September last year and hasn't left my desk. Just like a face serum, it has a thinner texture than most hand creams, so it sinks in so quickly and you can get straight back to your keyboard. It was a big year of at-home nail action for me, as always, but I was so happy to hear how many of you got into doing your nails for the first time using my tutorial. I've got my go-to brands, Olive & June, Essie and OPI here, but one of the nail highlights for me was getting to select shades for this Olive & June Matilda on Video curated collection. I picked six of my favourite colours that you can add to their Manny system or Petty system of helpful tools. This wasn't a paid partnership, they just asked a few nail friends to curate colour groups, and I went for a classic polish wardrobe. Sheer pink CCT, opaque baby pink GH, dusty rose HZ, pastel peach BI, bold red CV, and deep burgundy SC. You can still pick the setup on their website. I was drawn to a few clear colour families last year. Bright peaches, moody rosy neutrals, and deeper autumnal shades. 
Olive and June Wild and Free from their 2020 summer collaboration was the bright pop of peach I needed to boost my mood. OPI Infinite Shine You've Got Nata on Me was the slightly more muted, almost salmon pinky peach I put on a lot. Then Essie Eternal Optimist was one of my favourite dusky rose discoveries. I wore this in quite a few videos last year. Essie Clothing Optional was its deeper sister, a natural sienna brown that makes me want to curl up with a hot chocolate. Speaking of hot chocolate, Olive and June JJ is gorgeous. This cinnamon brown was from their 2020 fall collection, my favourite of the year. And Olive and June LD was part of that collection too. The beautiful rosy berry I reached for so often last year and have been wearing in this video. Thank you for watching this ridiculously late 2020 skincare favourites. I hope both parts were worth the wait. I'd love to hear about the little rituals or products that helped you last year, whether it was sitting down to paint your nails or losing yourself in the scent of a body wash or lotion. Let me know some of your favourite product discoveries and please share your self-care steps in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.